Right now, I'm in the process of removing the terminal or the bus bars from all these terminals. And what I'm going to do after that is I'm going to lap these t terminal tops because these bus bars may have actually dented or distorted the soft aluminum tops of these terminals and I don't want them to be flat again. And uh, I don't have any problems. And, uh, it also helps get rid of the oxidize on the, on the surface as well. The lapping kit's pretty simple. The primary part is this little boss. This could be made out of anything. I just made it out of a piece of brass. It's, it has a little bit more lubricity. Uh, here, I drilled a uh, six millimeter hole uh, in there so that it would just go over the studs like that. The hole is drilled at the same time that the end is turned flat, perfectly flat. And then it's drilled and tapped for uh, uh, your bolt of choice, but I used a quarter 20. And then a ball drive. And then you simply put it in the drill motor and uh, slowly run it on, on top. And for the abrasive, I just uh, used some thin, very thin film, double side sticky tape, uh, ran it over a sheet punched a bunch of holes, cut these out, and I left it long on there because it's easy to peel off the uh, backing material and also to peel it off the the, the lapping head. Um, there's no need to trim it round and make it perfect. Uh, when you're done, when you just peel it off and grab the next one. The grit, I'm going to try. Uh, I've got 500 grit here, and I've got 320 grit there. So we're going to find out which seems to work the best. I'm going to start with the finest first. And uh, that might be the, the go-to. But if I need to remove any material, I'll probably use this. And I don't know how many studs, uh, how, how many terminals, tops, uh, one piece of uh, uh, emery is going to work with. But uh, once it gets a little loaded up, then I'll just peel off and grab the next one. I got lots of them. And you just use the drill shank you know, over the hole to line up your uh, abrasive uh, when you stick it to the tool. Pretty simple. One of the best ways to do this, I have found by experience, is to run it forward and backwards slowly and then backwards. That's it. What that does, it breaks up the compound on, on there or the, the, the abrasive. Uh, uh, gets re releases the uh, cuttings, the dust, much easier that way, and the uh, abrasive lasts a much, much longer time, and you get a better finish. There's no trail, no tracking, no nothing. It looks really nice. Now you can notice there's a little bit of fuzz and whatnot. You gotta make sure you blend that towards the hull. You don't want any of that fuzz or burr on the surface. You want it down in the hole. That way, when you put it over the next one, it just goes pass the threads a little bit, and you can do it the, the twist method, turn it 180 degrees, uh, I mean uh, 90 degrees, and twist it again, back and forth. And same thing, you get a beautiful finish, but you have to clean this off each time between, and you can see, just get that dust off the abrasive, and it's ready to go for the next one. You probably go a good string of eight, Posts, easy, doing it that, that method. But it's all fine there, a little bit of fuzz from here and from there, but just make sure that goes towards the hole and you're ready just to go towards the next one. Now that you've got the terminal tops nice and flat and clean, you think you're ready to install your lugs. Well, most of the time you just take a little bit of 3M cloth, buff it up like that. And, you know, you got your tarnish off the, off the tin coating and you you're good to go, right? Watch this. I'm taking a file to this. They're anything but flat. See that? Anything but flat. So you're going to file these things out and get them nice and flat. And you go across about a 45 degree action. And eventually you work it down flat. And you just need to get down to the area Primarily focus around the area around the hole where your lug is actually going to be contacting. 
and you don't do the back and forth thing. You're stroking it, picking up the file each way, doing a 45, supporting it with your finger in the middle of the back of it. And you'd be surprised how flat you can get this by working it down like that. You can see it's taking a while. And after a while, you probably have to take the, the file and unload it. Take a wire brush. If there's any tin or anything in it, gotta keep going. Just file away. And when you get really close, you'll see it's starting to flatten out around the middle. So you had a concave in there. You wanna get this flat, or as close as flat as reasonable. It takes a little while, but they're all like that. They're all bad. And you figure lugs are going to be flat. Well, they're probably good enough for most things, but you can't put enough torque on these things to flatten them out down on your terminals. You know, if you do, you're going to wreck your, your, your terminals, strip something out. So you're working at this 45 degree angle, and now we're getting nice and flat. We're getting really close to being good enough. A little bit of witness right there. I'm considering just going ahead and leaving that because we're getting so close. And also, you got better things to do than watch me file a lug. All right. Now you're thinking, okay, Einstein, you just got all the tin coating off of that thing. What are you going to do now? Well, liquid tin. Magic. You catch that? Well, I stay away from the hole. No need to go into the hole. I wasn't in there. So, and you just put that on there and you let that sit for a few minutes. And it's all a few microns thick, but that's all you need. You know, you, you just need a, a junction between the copper and the aluminum top of your battery. Tin is very close on the noble metals chart to the aluminum, closer than copper. Copper is a little more noble, so that's why you want to tin it. So it only takes a moment. And when, once you've done that, you'll wipe this, this down really quick with a fresh piece each time. And you'll go and rinse it out uh, under hot water in the faucet to get rid of uh, the, any acids that may... Uh, uh, reside there and these over here were already done these were rinsed off you can see they're nice and shiny totally flat and they were rinsed off they don't tarnish when you hit the water on it they just stay nice and pretty so yeah that's the way to go and you just have to do that to all the other lugs but that looks perfectly okay it's not well this one's better right off the bat i can tell that one's better I'm uh, working on the outside edge a little bit first to get most of that material down so I don't have to work so hard. I got more strength in that direction. Again, I'm lifting it, picking it up. But look at that concave mark that's there. Now, that was not from tightening uh, uh, use in the, in the past. That's just the way this lug's made when they stamped it out or punched out those holes. It must have deformed it a little bit. But we're almost done. This one's coming... Yeah, now I'm going to go with the 45 pattern. I just need it around the hole. Right where the terminals are. And a little bit of witness tin there that's in the back. That's not, that's not a problem. That's all good. So, grab some of this tin. You don't want to get this stuff on your fingers. I'm sure it's not good for you. And I'm just going to let that sit. Now recoat this side that I did earlier because it wasn't on there very long. And you can rub on this stuff. It takes quite of a, a beating to try to get that stuff off. I'm just going to let it sit. Put this back on so I don't accidentally knock it over. But you can rub this stuff. Find a clean spot on there. 
and it does not come off. It does not rub off. It's plenty good enough for what we're doing. It's not like these batteries going to be exposed to the elements out, outside. I mean, moisture of in, internal space, maybe, but they're not taking, you know, the elements on them. They shouldn't. So, there you go. You're going to have the best connection humanly possible on these batteries when you lap the tops, get the oxides off, and as soon as possible, put these on the terminals because aluminum oxidizes within minutes, seconds. <laughs> it starts to oxidize. And you, you clean those things off again, and you'd be surprised how much smudge you get after a day. You go to polish them off, you get more uh, aluminum uh, oxide comes off as a blackish residue on your paper each time you clean clean it's a tarnish that forms on the aluminum anyways this is the way i highly recommend doing your terminals and you you just retin them and you don't have to worry about that um, metal uh, differential problem but yeah just it's nice as flat and much flatter than than uh, than it was put it that way it's not perfectly flat but as flat as humanly possible with a file and yeah, I'm sure that's probably better than a half a thousands flat across that uh, if you if you're really good at it. But uh, uh, just take your time, and you'd be amazed at how much better contact you're going to have on your terminals. You're not going to have any resistance between the base of your terminal and the top when you take a probe and you go top to bottom. Okay, got them all nice and flat and tinned. Well, you get a nice flash. You know it's pretty flat. Nice and tin. Um, one, th one thing you want to do is, is make sure you clean it and get all the ox guard off uh, before you start filing it because you're just working it into the surface. And if you don't get it off and nice and clean beforehand, that uh, uh, liquid tin uh, doesn't seem to adhere as well. So if you got it really nice and clean, that, that this stuff just sticks like crazy. You can find this on on Amazon. Uh, file that you want to be using is uh, this one's a uh, uh, what they call flat bastard <laughs> mill bastard. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, mill bastard uh, Nicholson brand is very very good. This is also a Nicholson brand, and this one's a uh, mill smooth, and this one again is a mill bastard so uh, this one's well used well loved it still works got to keep them clean keep a wire brush into them to keep the the teeth clear and you shouldn't have any problem so now i'm going to clean the terminals one more time put a little bit of ox guard on it or i have some carbon uh contact uh solution so uh, I don't know which one I'm, what I'm going to do. I might do half and half and see if there's a difference. Uh, anybody have any ideas? Uh, uh, put put it down uh, down below, and because uh, I'm kind of curious to see what works better.